Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm the Public Health Doctor and I make videos on all things public health and lifestyle. If that sounds like your kind of thing, then feel free to subscribe and leave a comment down below about what kind of videos you want to see next. Now today I'm going to be doing a video that I have been asked about a lot in real life, on this channel, through different sorts of medias and essentially it's my experience with the public health um, application process. How did I apply? What did, what did I use to prepare? What was the timeline? So I'm going to be addressing all those questions in this video. Um, I will also leave timestamps so you can go to the specific parts that you're interested in, but it will be a long video because I want to make sure it's detailed. So if that sounds like what you're interested in, then keep watching. Quick disclaimer before I get into anything. This is obviously just my experience with the program. This is obviously just what I have. Um, I applied in 2018 and I started working in 2019 as a public health trainee. And since then, you know, COVID has hit. Things have changed a little bit, but I have tried to get information from people who have done it during COVID. And I've incorporated some comments here and there about how things have changed. But I will always emphasise that it's important to make sure that you go onto the Faculty of Public Health's website just to make sure that actually the information I say in this video, which is true at the time of the video, hasn't changed because it's possible that the format may have changed a bit, the timing may have changed a bit, but um, this is just my experience. So it's important that you just make sure you check that and not take my word as gospel. Now that that is out of the way, let's get into it. So I have a whole video on what the public health training scheme is and I will leave a, vid a link to that video if you're interested. But in very brief summary, essentially is a program where you do rotations through different public health departments in the UK and at the end of those four to five years you become a public health consultant. Um, you also have to do exams um, as well and you have certain sort of requirements you have to meet at the end of these five years. It follows a medical training pathway, but it's open to both doctors and non-doctors. But again, I detail what exactly the requirements are in that video that I'm talking about. So again, I will put a link to that um, down below. So I have my notes on my laptop. That's why I'm looking down in case you're wondering what I'm looking at, just to make sure I don't forget anything. So starting with the beginning, applications open in November. So before that, you get an advert around the end of October that goes round and you can, this advert is usually on things like NHS jobs, on the Faculty of Public Health website, essentially saying that there's a nationwide recruitment that's starting for the next round of public health um, registrars. And that essentially details the website that you need to go register at and just what information you need to know. So when that advert goes out in November, you register on this website and then you fill in your details. Now, essentially what that you're doing at this stage is just they're just trying to see if you've met the entry requirements, essentially long listing people who have met the requirements from those who haven't. That's the first um, that's the first stage. So for doctors, you just fill in information like what medical school you went to, where you did your foundation training almost like filling out your CV so that you can evidence that, yes, you've met the entry requirements and therefore you should go to the next stage. For non-doctors, it's also similar, but there's also an additional, um, I think a short, like almost like a supporting statement where you kind of have to add a comment about how your experience and um, what you've gained in terms of public health experience from the months that you've, from the experience that you're listing as being relevant. Again, in my other video, I speak a bit more about what um, the entry requirements are for doctors and non-doctors. So feel free to go back and watch that. If yeah, you have my laptop, just for my notes. But I made my application um, in November, like I said, when the applications opened. And I didn't hear anything until about the 20th of December when I got emails saying that I've been, inv I've been invited to the assessment centre. So essentially, if they, if they look at your application and they feel like you've met the entry requirements then you then get invited to the assessment centre. Now what's the assessment centre? Now that's a little bit of a, um, if you haven't done, if, especially if you're a medic and you haven't done any other job applications before in any other field it's a bit different. So it's essentially psychometric tests 
but you you do it at the person view centers which is where the driving tests the theory driving tests are done so what you're essentially um, examined on is numeracy literacy and situational judgment tests now that makes it sound a lot easier <laughs> than i think it is um, it was unlike anything I've done before. Like I said, as a doctor, I've never really done any psychometric tests. And um, the numeracy part of it is um, a particular type of numeracy test called the RANRA. And the literacy part is the Watson Glazer. Now, having never done anything like this before, understandably, <laughs> I was a bit freaked out because I thought, what am I going to do? And um, what actually helped me a lot was using a website called Job Test Prep. Um, so on the Job Test Prep website, they have um, a particular package for public health, which I used. And that helped me really get into the mindset of looking at those sorts of questions. Cause it's not just straightforward numeracy, it's not just straightforward literacy. It's again, colleagues who've done psychometric tests would know. It's, it's more about, you know, deductive reasoning, inductive reasoning, you know, and, you don't have that many minutes per question. Everything is multiple choice, um, which is great, but the, ultimately you don't have that many minutes per question. So using the job test prep website allowed me practice in a safe space, looking at these questions and then when I get them wrong, looking at how they managed to solve it in the short amount of time that um, is available. So using job test prep really helped me get into that mindset and I, I initially did some things on time then I did it timed and um, just to get into the habit of like working under pressure so job test prep helped me a lot for the RANRA which is the numeracy the Watson Glazer which is the literacy but not so much for the situ situational judgment tests for that I felt a lot like because as public health trainees you are in a training post and the situational judgment test um, papers or practice papers on job test prep felt a lot like you were in a position as a um, employee and you had a manager you know all the usual concepts of as a trainee you have your educational supervisor you have people to lean on people to lean on you don't make decisions in isolation because you're learning your training to be a consultant eventually those things didn't really come through in my opinion from the job test prep website so what I did instead was that I used the, um, because I know public health is a branch of medicine and doctors have to um, abide by what we call good medical practice. I then used the good medical practice guide for public health. Again, all of these things I will link below. And I, was, I would just read over and try to understand what is expected of me as a public health trainee and soon to be consultant. So when I saw these situational judgment test questions where you get a question about a specific situation and then multiple choices as to what you would do or what you would do first and what you do last, that sort of setup, I would always try and remember what would they expect me to do as a trainee? What are they expecting of me as a public health soon to be consultant? And I allowed that guide my decisions rather than like using this, the situational judgment tests on job test prep on job test prep so that's the only thing i would say job test prep wasn't job test prep wasn't very helpful for i found it very hard to um i just didn't really agree with a lot of their answers but then that was just my perspective and my experience i also know that people who've applied for public health who didn't use any tips for, uh, for the assessment center who didn't need to use job test prep like i said everybody's different i'm just telling you what i used because it was I hadn't really had I had really no experience with any of the stuff okay so after I did the um after I got the email on the 28th of December saying that I was invited to the assessment center the assessment center date was then in January so it was a very short time between the let the email inviting me and the actual assessment center at the time it was done online so it was done, you had to go into the person view centre and it was done on one date. Now it's done well, with COVID, colleagues I spoke to said essentially they've just transferred the same thing, but it's just online now. And you just have to do the same thing that you would do at person view online. 
Um, another thing I will add to that is that you only have a whiteboard. You have to get a whiteboard, whether you're doing it at home or you're at the person who they provide you with a whiteboard. And you can only use that whiteboard for note taking um, or for like working things yeah. out. So, yeah. If we get to the assessment center phase, which is the literacy, numeracy and situational judgment test phase, and you pass that, I think you need to pass all of the individual elements as well as your overall mark has to um, meet the cutoff. And the cutoff obviously varies every year based on how other people do in your cohort. Um, so if you meet those requirements, you then get invited to the selection centre. So I got that email on the 29th of January and um, I had options for the selection centre, which was between the 11th to the 13th of February. So again, quite short timeline. Mm -hmm. I'm going to speak about what the selection centre is what um how it was in real life and then how it has been online so the selection center is essentially the interview component of the application and it is where you get you get tested on skills that are specific to public health if you remember the assessment center was general numeracy and literacy skills this is public health specific testing and this is the last stage of the recruitment process so when we had it in person, like I said, we had um, to choose a date out of three dates and it used to all happen in one site, which was in Loughborough. So you'd have to um, go up to Loughborough and it was about five hours of the day. So it was quite an intensive um, interview and it's made up of really three main parts. There is um, face to face in interviews um, yeah, there's face to face interviews of which you have a, a series of them. Um, there's also a written component and there's group work. Again, like I said, really this is the part of this of recruitment process that tests your public health skills. And I will say there's no particular um, advantage to being a doctor or not being a doctor because if you're a doctor, you have some strengths. But if, you're, if you've worked in public health for years, you have other strengths that doctors don't have. So I, I actually believe this is quite fair recruitment process to a certain degree i mean nothing's 100 percent fair but you don't get particular advantage for having one experience over the other and um, it tests it, it tests really a wide range of public health skills which is why um it's such a that's why there's so many parts of it because they're trying to see a different parts of you and then you get scored on each of the different components now with covid that has now that changed a little bit last year um and rather than having all these different group components and interviews um, it was only just interviews and it was conducted virtually as you can imagine how that will change for the next recruitment round i'm not sure um, i have no indication of how that will be like i said just check the faculty website to see if they've changed anything do your research there's lots of links out there and um about what what will happen or what they're expecting to happen for the next round so I would advise you just to keep your keep your eyes on the or keep keep on researching and checking. Now, how did I prepare for the selection center? This was the hardest one for me to prepare for, if I'm honest, because I wasn't really sure what to expect. I didn't really know what they would be expecting of me, um, and because of that, I went into like broad research mode. The most helpful website for me was a website called Ask Dr. Kath. It was helpful for me because it's, it's a blog who's, that's written by a public health consultant, but it's always aimed at people who want to get into public health, who are already working in public health, and it covers a wide range of scenarios that public health um, professionals have to deal with. So for someone like me who didn't really know exactly what the day-to-day -day job entailed in any kind of specific detail, other than a taste around it done, I found it so helpful. And I felt like that helped me guide my further research. There was no particular book I used because, again, I didn't really know how to prep. I just tried to read as widely as possible on whatever was relevant, whatever I felt was a relevant public health issue. I was looking at, the, like I mentioned, the Ask Dr. Kath website to see what doctors, sorry, what public health professionals do on a daily basis, the kind of scenarios they you know, get involved in. Because I wanted to make sure I had a broad knowledge of um, what would be expected. Like I said, um, it tests a wide range of public health skills. Now, I can't really say exactly what questions I had because again, just to make sure that the, to preserve the integrity of the 
application process and the recruitment process. But like I said, it tests a wide range of public health skills. So read as broadly as you can and, you know, I'm trying to think of what else I can say. It's, it was, like I said, it was difficult to prepare for. Everyone I know, a friend of mine used a, a public health for dummies. I think just anything that just gives you a, an idea of what public health involves, how you can, um, how you can, what exactly they do on a daily basis and like just general concepts will be probably good enough. Like I said, it's a hard one to prepare for. So I'm sorry I don't really have any more details of how I prepared because I also was kind of scrambling, asking friends, just general, um, I was in general interview prep that you would for any job, as well as also trying to find public health specific information. Between after the selection center and before you get your results, you have to do um, some ranking. So what happens is that you have to, you get a list online, a list of all the public health, um, all the local authorities that have capacity or space for a public health registrar that year and you have to rank from one to let's say there's 16 from one to 16 and um, which local authority you'd rather work in and what happens is that everybody gets a total score for how they did in the assessment center and how they did in the selection center and the person who has the highest score will obviously get the first pick so they will get the first choice then goes to the second highest score, then they probably get their first choice. If their first choice is taken, they get their second choice. Then it keeps on going that way until you, until it gets to your whatever position you have. About after ranking, then you then find out on the 26th, I found on the 26th of February that I got a job and then which particular job I got um, based on what I ranked. And then not long after that you then get an email so i got an email on the 7th of march they're sending me the feedback from the assessment center and the selection center so up until that point you're applying essentially blind you don't know what scores you got in your assessment center when you get offered a job you still don't know what scores you got in your selection center so you then get your feedback about a weekish about a week after that they then say this is what you got for the each of for the Ranra for the Watson Glazer for the SJT and they also tell you how other people did on average and where you scored in terms of um relative to the average score you also get a breakdown of what you got for each of your interview stations and you get that whether you get a place and you get this feedback whether you get offered a place or not just so you know how if you didn't get a place you can then see maybe what you can improve on for next time I really hope you guys found this video helpful I hope that this video has helped you a better understanding of what the application process is like what the timelines are like and what i use to prepare and what you could use to prepare this is just what i use but you know yourself more than anybody so feel free to adapt the tips and tricks i've mentioned for what is best for you thank you so much for watching feel free to leave any comments if i haven't answered your questions i'll get around to it and any ideas of videos that you want to see for the future